Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now, inspiration for these videos can come from a variety of sources, and this week it just so happens to come from across the pond. I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and came across the account of Jody Masser Art, a scenic painter in the UK, who was sharing their technique for creating the look of peeling and chipping paint. So after I reached out and asked for their blessing, I'm here to share it with you. So let's get to it. There's two things that make this effect work, wall texture spray and liquid latex. So once I had them in hand, it was time to find a surface. And in this case, this piece of plywood from another project will do just fine. Because the plywood is already painted the same color as my final top paint color, I'll need to map out the locations for my peeling paint with a bit of spray paint. This will give me the contrast I need to make the effect really stand out. Now you don't specifically need to use the spray paint, I just happen to have some on hand and knew that I'd only need it in a few spots. With the paint finally dry, the next step in the process is to build up the underlying texture on the wall. So with my wall texture spray in hand and the texture adjustment set to about medium, I'm going to apply it to the painted areas. This will make the top layer of paint look like it's bubbled away from the wall and really helps to sell the effect. You can get some variety in the texture by moving the can closer and further away from the surface. This will create tight or loose spray patterns that help to make it look a bit more random. Once the texture sprays had time to dry completely, I'll grab some brown and orange acrylic paint and a spray bottle of water to give the wall a rusty, moldy appearance. I'll dab on some of the brown paint and then spray it with water to cause the paint to spread. This works best when the surface is horizontal, so if your walls are vertical, you may want to apply the paint with a sea sponge to keep the paint from running down the surface. And once I'm happy with the application of brown paint, I'll switch to orange and repeat the process. Because the surface is damp, I didn't need as much water for the orange paint to get it to blend. However, I did go back with a damp sea sponge for a final blending pass just to make sure everything looked how I wanted. Now you can use whatever colors you'd like for this step, but I highly suggest looking online for reference photos to help you choose the best colors for the type of damage you're shooting for. Now that the acrylic paint is dried, it's time for the liquid latex part of this process. I poured myself a few tablespoons worth for this wall section, so the bottle should go a long way if you're doing a bigger space. I grabbed a chip brush and started to apply the latex to the areas where I wanted the brown and orange paints to show through. This application doesn't have to be thick. In fact, the thicker the application, the longer it takes to dry. You want to add the latex in different shapes and sizes during this step so that there's some variety to the damage. And if you're working with a team, let multiple people apply latex to ensure that you're not creating patterns in the application. The latex goes on a milky white color and as it dries, it turns more translucent. So once I covered the areas where I wanted the peeled paint effect, it was time to let it dry and then I can roll on my top coat of paint. I had some old interior latex paint laying around, although if this was going to be outdoors, I'd use exterior paint to help with the longevity of the wall panel. As you can see, the walls have started to look like the paint has bubbled away from the surface as a result of the texture spray and latex application. And once the paint is fully dried, it's time to start peeling away the latex to expose the grime layer below. I used a putty knife to get started, but you could use anything from a toothpick to your fingernail for this step. Now, if you're thinking this step was going to be really satisfying, you're right, it was. The reason this method works so well is because there's a degree of randomness created by the liquid latex and paint as it tears away from the surface that you just can't replicate by hand without spending countless hours on it.
As a final added step, I decided to try dragging my putty knife through the wall texture to see what kind of effect it would create. I think it added a bit more to the overall appearance, as if the plaster was starting to crumble as a result of age and disrepair. It's also nice to show some variety in the scale of the paint damage so that it doesn't look just like big sections are missing. Now this is one of those techniques that's a lot of fun to do, and I guarantee you that once you've tried it, you're going to want to use it often. A big shout out to Jody Master Art over in the UK for sharing their technique with us, and to Mike Brunner for weighing in on his experience using this technique as well. That's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>